Well, good morning there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Try New Things, where today we're gonna start another project, and I'll finish it before the end of the video, but it certainly won't be today. So over here at the barn, I've got a nice downspout coming down the corner, and it goes directly into the ground, and then I've got a running underground further down the hill. But what I'm thinking about doing is rainwater collection system here at the corner of the barn as well. We've got a great big roof surface here. We could collect lots and lots of rainwater. And in preparation for that, at a recent auction, I did make a, uh, a buy. And that buy was these two 330 gallon totes that I purchased at auction from the winery next door. I do think I want to pick up one more somewhere else, and that way it would get me pretty darn close to a thousand gallons of water storage. But I've got to do some preparation over here at the barn to get ready to hook those up later this spring. And that preparation starts here. So I've got a collection of uh, flat limestone rocks that I've dug up on the property. Just in case I wanted to do something with them. I mean, I made a nice walk away with them down there or entry to the greenhouse you never know when you're going to need a bunch of flat rocks i guess but i've got to move those out of the way and then behind that is my strawberries and blueberries that are actually getting to the point where they're doing really well and it's a shame i have to move those because there is no bottom to that box i can't really just pick it up I mean, I can pick up the box, but uh, the strawberries and blueberries will still be there. And I'm going to have to move those because this spring we're also planning on doing some raised garden beds. What I'm thinking is transplanting, if they survive, those strawberries and blueberries into those raised garden beds. But once that's done, we're going to have to extend the gravel all the way to the corner and then level off a spot that's big enough for three of those 330 gallon totes. So today I'm going to start by at least moving the rocks and maybe addressing the strawberries and blueberries. Get that all done and before the end of the video you will see a brand new rainwater collection system. Well, that went about as well as expected. I did manage to pick up the entire planter box in one piece, but I left 100% of the strawberries and blueberries behind. So now we'll swap out to the bucket, see if we can't delicately-ish move these and save as many as we can for replanting next spring.
there we go. Where we're going to put all the rainwater collection system is now clear. The next step is to order a load of gravel. And over here, the blueberries and strawberries are enjoying their nice new temporary winter home. Well, I got some good news. The uh, gravel I need to continue my project has arrived. Bigger load than I expected. So I'm certain I'm gonna have more than I need, which is fine. It's not gonna go to waste. I have lots of driveway here that I can always spread a little bit more gravel on, but let me show you the pile. So given how wet our lawn is out here, I had them dump it down there, halfway down the driveway in a turnaround. But yeah, tri-axle load of crushed rock ready to help us keep these projects moving. Back here at the corner of the barn, I've already gone ahead and put down the landscape fabric. So all we got to do now is spread out a little gravel, level it off, and start building our rainwater harvesting platform that's going to support the 330 gallon totes. So there we have it, a relatively flat area upon which to build the support frame that's going to hold our water totes. I do have a little dip over there between the two doors so I need to fill in, but otherwise it's looking pretty good. And over there's the lumber to get started on the next step. All right, time for a quick update. We're working on the frame for the rainwater collection system that's going to be attached to the corner of the barn. And I've elected to do sort of a semi-lap joint kind of thing. And it's quickly becoming boredom by a thousand cuts. But I'm about ready to take the chisel and the hammer and take that out. Work my way down this board and then back and forth across the other three getting ready for the cross members. Welcome back. We're here on another rainy day and after hours and hours of cutting and chiseling I've got my lap joints complete and it's ready to start assembly of the frame.
Well, good morning, everybody. It's a chilly one out here on the farm today. It's a little bit below freezing, but we're still working on our support platform for our rainwater harvesting system. Now, let me take a minute, show you where I'm at, walk you through what I'm going to do next and why I'm going to do it. All right, this is where we've progressed to so far. It's a fairly beefy platform. It's all made out of four by fours. I got six inch lag bolts holding everything together, lap joints. And I started putting some two by four diagonals as well. And the reason I need this to be so beefy is because we want to hold a thousand gallons of water. Now water weighs 8.3 pounds per gallon. So that'd be 8,300 pounds. They'll never be quite full to the top just because of the overflow but still this thing at its max needs to be able to comfortably hold four tons of water and that's a lot of water what you're looking at here is it's 44 inches tall 48 inches across so it's four feet deep and then just a hair over 10 feet long to accommodate three of those totes but yeah it's a it's a beefy one but i've got to put some diagonals in this direction to keep it from going this way or that way so that's what we're going to do today i stopped picked up some more two by fours we're going to finish up this platform and then we're going to make sure it's level and then we're going to put the totes on top but one thing i did see we're going to have to relocate my security camera because it's going to be completely blocked by the uh the rainwater tote when I'm done but that's a chore for a day soon to come and not today today finish the diagonal bracing get this thing leveled up and uh, we'll be ready to put the totes on it one more thing before I do that I forgot to mention why it is about a little over 40 inches tall now the head pressure from an additional 40 inches is not going to be much so when you've got uh, every foot of water produces 0.4 pounds of pressure. So that's, it'll be like 1.6 or 1.5 additional pounds of pressure because of the height of the platform. But you know, if you're trying to uh, use gravity, if you raise your hose above your water level, it will cease to flow. And I've got a portable water tank, you won't see it for the sun over there, that I want to fill up and carry around on the forks to get the fruit trees out front. And that extra little bit of height uh, will help me slowly fill that tank up from these totes. Now from here, down to the garden, which is down the hill there a ways, I figure there's about 30 foot of elevation drop to the garden. So with 30 feet of drop, um, I'm going to have about 13 pounds of pressure at the end of the garden hose. We'll see. We'll see how that turns out. We may put an inline pump here at the barn just to kick up the pressure. But anyway, I got to get to work.
So there we have it. We've got our two tanks up on the new platform. This has already been a fairly long video, so we're going to wrap it up here for now. And in the next episode or part two of this particular series, what we're going to do is hopefully be adding the third tank after I find one and pick one up. Got to relocate that uh, security camera for sure because it's going to be in the way. And more importantly is we're going to handle all the plumbing that goes into turning this into a rainwater collection system. So that's tapping into the downspout and how are we going to tie these things together and provide for overflow and all that. So that'll be in the next episode or part two of this particular series. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one on at least building the stand. Again, it's a, it's a beefy beast, but it has to be for the 8,000 pounds that it's going to carry. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below do me a big favor if you haven't already hit subscribe so you don't miss another video and we'll see you in the next one bye bye time for an update we're what in the heck is that